<laughs> How much time have you been planning that, Stowell? Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there was there was a lot more with Lamella. I was talking about like I, I I did consider thinking about you know playing FIFA with him and him saying to me, hey, you know, you look a little bit stressed out. Do you want a wank? And me saying, well, I'm not stressed out. And saying, well, I am. Can I wank you off? And you're like, no. And, and then we never spoke about it again. <laughs> Fucking hell. And what are your plans for that? <laughs> he just looks like the kind of player that might like fancy. Just wanking somebody off. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the base are bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its load of nights We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights And when the game is done we'll sing a song and talk it out all night Hey, Come on Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow You are the first team, the last team Hi, it's Season 6, Episode 2 of the Tottenham Hotspur Family Podcast Joining me this week, Bex from Portsmouth Hello And Mark Stoll from California Good morning. Right, it's finally here. We, we kicked off yesterday against Aston Villa. Um, three points in the bag, but bloody hell, we, we made difficult work of it. Um, <laughs> Bex, you, Only you, for you, 73 minutes. That was fine. Well, After 73 you, minutes, the game looked really well. It looked much better then. You said it wasn't going to be a shoe in did you? On, 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 yep. on, on, on the last pod. And, and it yep. proved to be... They, they proved to be difficult opponents or were they or was it for just the fact that we we were completely out of sorts in the first half I think we looked dreadful that first half was just no not dreadful that's unfair we just didn't look coherent and as a proper unit I think Jan being Jan not playing I don't know how deeply that affected the players but it looked like they were all a little bit out of sync I don't know it was really weird and I'm not saying Winks played badly because I don't think he did mm. But the change when Ericsson came on was absolutely immense. And that's what made the difference to the game, I think. Um, on that change, we had a question from Nikki Merritt, um, chair of the Johannesburg Spurs Supporters Club. And she says, Pochettino said in his post-match interview that he got it wrong with tactics for the first half. Was it a case of not knowing how Villa, being newly promoted, would perform or just really underestimating the opponent? She goes on to say, hopefully... He won't get it wrong like that against City because we might not get the chance to come back and get a result next week if we do. We can't afford to be on the back foot, um, but at least he admits his failings, unlike other managers, next managers. Um, I yeah, I think that the introduction of the introduction of Ericsson certainly helped. I think it was a combination of two <laughs> things in, in, in that in that second half. Um, that, that that changed it around for us. One was tactically, um, we were playing with a diamond in the first half, and we just seemed too narrow. And when um, when Ericsson c- came on, we changed it around, and actually Ericsson was playing much further forward than um, than he had done on a few occasions last season. He was sort of playing more in a sort of ten role rather than eight role, and we we started to press up high up the pitch, and we didn't look narrow anymore, and. And I think the, the, the passing was a lot more fluid. And, and Ericsson is, you know, he's a wizard. He's, he's, he's when he feels like it. When he feels like it, yeah. I mean, he's he's good with the ball. He can pick a pass, and players start to to, to respond accordingly and and start to make the runs. And we looked at, look, looks a lot more look more looks a lot more fluid. I think I think that I don't know that we underestimated them. I think that. I think going a goal down didn't help early on, um, and and then you're on the back foot. And for me, the bigger thing isn't the fact that you know the lineup, whether it was right or wrong or, or whatever in the first half, or or, or 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 the tactics. And some might argue, well, Ericsson should play. There's another school of thought which says that with a contract dispute um, going on, um, he might not be the right mental mental frame of mind and you've got to start preparing for a point in which where you can't re- um, rely upon him so there's no point starting him etc um, rights or wrongs of that put to one side but for me the bigger issue is the fact that not issue the bigger bigger 
point is the fact that Pochettino responded to to that and we changed things around and that's the mark of a good good manager how many times have we recorded podcasts last season the season before we're we're always fans are critical we get you know um, listeners um, us sitting around you know discussing Pochettino being late to respond to things, late to make changes, late to bring substitutions. He got it spot on yesterday in the second half. Um, to me, that's a mark of a good, good manager. If, if, if somebody like Jose Mourinho would, would, would do it, or Pep, um, Pep at City would pundits would be wax lyrical about it. So credit credit where it's due, I think. Um, Mark, how do you how do you, how do you see yesterday's game, and and, and do you think that that, that, that we Underestimated Villa, Villa was was the the way we shaped up in the first half was that um, arrogance on our part. No, I, I wouldn't say so. I don't believe that. I think um, <clears throat> you know we, we were rusty in the first half, a little bit disjointed here and there for sure. But they they got that early goal, didn't they? We we made a mistake and they got in, got that early goal, and then what happens at when we're at home and teams get an early goal against us, so they score first, they start to retreat and, and close up and it becomes difficult for us. Um, there definitely wasn't there def- definitely wasn't enough urgency in the first half and I think I think um, Winks coming off was probably a good thing because hopefully he learned from that because, you know, he, do- he does a good job, he pulls the strings, but he's a little bit too conservative. I think in games like that, he's got to start forcing the issue and, and playing more positive passes forwards instead of sideways and, and backwards. I think he's got to be... It's time this season that he starts to really push on. He can do what he's doing now, but is he going to start becoming more consistent and start really influencing games more? Because he's got the capabilities. Now it's a case of whether he's going to do it. You know, and... and and people say Ericsson did, Ericsson did do great, but you got to remember too is he came on after what sixty five minutes, something like that. Villa's first game in the Premiership, ten minutes before we scored, they were praising Villa's fitness, and then all of a sudden, you know, we started to our stamina was much better, our fitness was much better, and we started to run them ragged and, mm. and started pulling them all over the place and. Who better to come on at a time like that than somebody like Ericsson, right? Who's got that vision and that ability? He's also so, quite fit, isn't he? Yeah, he he does work his ass off. People don't see that. He he don't stop running. He don't stop running. But all in all, all in all, I mean, it was a, it was it was a decent win. We corrected it. We got ourselves going. Look at the number of shots we had. I mean, our, our shooting was awful. So, Soko, has, <laughs> um, his form's continued from last season, which is interesting to see. We've got, our, we've got our Moose and Soko back. Yes. <laughs> to, be, I, to, to be fair, apart from apart from the few chances he did have you know, in the final third when he threw on goal, which I don't think he's ever really corrected that side of his... You know, even last season, we saw it... Um, at Anfield, where he had a chance, everything else up to that point, he did well. You know, he can, he can, he, he worked hard. He, he brings the ball for, brings the ball forward. His his touch, which used to be really poor, isn't poor anymore. So that side of the game is fine. It's just that final ball. You know, he just that, he doesn't it, have the flair took, and finesse. It took some doing for him to like put the ball out for a throw on, <laughs> on the edge of the six-yard box. So that was pretty special. Yeah, but a couple of times it? he tried to take the shot when there were players inside with a better, who may have had a better opportunity. So I think mm. that was a little bit of a um, short-sighted, shall we say. And obviously yeah. there's no guarantee they would have scored. It was just quite likely that they would have done or at least had a better shot. Was he aiming to shoot, or was, it, or, or, or was he trying to cross the ball? <laughs> um, I don't think there's a good answer for him on that um, one. The commentary said it was a shot, but I thought it was a cross. Okay. So I'm either really crap at football stuff, which is quite likely. Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask him to see what his interpretation mm-hmm. was. Um, comment from Dave Phipps, Ericsson made the difference and then uh, following on from that Zoe Pearson, her Twitter handle is at Z underscore Pearson THFC, she says great win after a poor, perform- poor first half performance did Ericsson's impact 
prove just how invaluable he invaluable he may be for us. Who do you bring in to do what he does? Well, Le Celso, Ch- one, Ch- one would hope. Le Celso. Yeah. Le Celso is the one. He, he, he operates in exactly the same areas of the pitch. If you watch him, if you've seen him play, it's, it's a like for like. Is it Le Celso or Le Celso? I've heard Le Celso in the Copper America. I yeah. Le Celso, but... Hmm. I'm not fucked either way. It's, it's at least his name I can pronounce. <laughs> either, either permutation is fine to me. Um, I don't know. Well, the, thing, the thing that frustrates me with Ericsson is the lack of consistency. And yeah, he made a massive impact yesterday, but we've had games where he just isn't hmm. part of the team almost. So it, it's a really hard one to say, should we replace or who would we replace him with? Because like yesterday, nobody would replace him with that. He was excellent. But you can't guarantee that when we play City next weekend, he's going to be that impactful. Will he start? Will Poch keep him on the bench? Does that make a difference? I don't know. So Will I think... he be at the club? Yeah. Yes. Well. Hmm. So I think I look. I would. I, I want him to stay. Of course, if he if he I want him to stay and sign and, and sign a new contract. Of course, um, I think as you, as you mentioned in the last. Pod Bex. If if he doesn't want to stay, if he wants to go, then any player who's of that mindset, you, you, you don't want them at the, at the club. You want somebody who's 100% committed. Um, I think he's a, I think he's a great player. He's, you know, he's a skillful player, and and I think we will miss him if he's gone. And and he's also very hard working. One accusation that I've heard said of Ericsson and um, one of our listeners, Ed Brad, who um, I met I met on Friday for lunch, and I'll I'll talk a little bit about that a bit later in a discussion we had later on in the pod around transfers um his long standing criticism of e- of, of Ericsson even is the fact that he does it against the smaller teams you know like Villa yesterday um Palace last season getting that late winner so, so many others but against the big teams he rarely shows up is that a fair criticism of of, of, of Ericsson let's compare his performance yesterday against a newly promoted Aston Villa to the Champions League final, as a, an example. Mm. Well, he, went, he? he went missing. Well, so mm. that. Well, uh, but those are two very those are two polar opposites, aren't they? Really unfair comparison, maybe. But he does that quite often, just not deliver. I think he's. I think he's. People are a little bit forgetful. He's he's scored plenty of goals against Chelsea, right? Yeah. He scored, he scored, he scored at least two against Bridget Bridget Oh, do we have to consider them a big team? My bad, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, I, th- I think for me, like with the, the Champions League final, um, yeah, it wasn't a great performance, but I also thought that maybe he needs to go. Maybe we've become so reliant on him and maybe he's, he's also become predictable for other teams as to what he's going to do, what we're yeah. going to do. And maybe, maybe it, it could be a good thing for us in the future if we can get some, you know, we've got some other players that can do something different now. I don't want yeah. to see him go, but if he's made up his mind, then it's best to just let him go. Mm. Well, I mean, anybody anybody who wants to go to Real Madrid after the way they've treated Bale, good luck to them. He's not looking you, at Real, though, is he? It's Atleti that came in for him. Because Real have got Hazard. <laughs> So, so, really so, as well? well, so we're led to believe, but Atletico Madrid have, are absolutely stacked in midfield with João Felix and all kinds of players there. Lamar, they've got a ton of players in midfield, so I don't know how true that is that they want him. Oh. Either, way, either way, for me, I just don't want it. I don't want to be like Arsenal and that start this trend of players seeing out their contract with us and us losing mm-hmm. a bunch of money either. I just don't. I just don't. I don't think Levy will do that, but I don't want to see that either. That's not a good thing. Um, yeah. Talking of which, um, <laughs> we've got a question further in the running running order uh, uh, around Jan and and his absence. Um, he's an, obviously another one of those players. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, uh, let's just go back to yesterday's performance. Um, question from Darren Pamenter, um, Tangai on Dombele. So uh, on the last pod, I said it's Dombele. But then, if uh-huh. you look at his video, he did a video for Spurs TV. I'm pretty sure he says Undombele. Oh, it doesn't matter. 
It's not at least. He's not going to listen to us, is he? We can call him what we like. No, we can call him Sid. Um, Looked decent on debut. Obviously, still betting into a new country and style, but great goal. Then showed um, some more confident class touches thereafter. How do you guys think? How good do you guys think he can be for us? Hmm. Well, he had, it it was a decent debut. He was rusty in places. I, to be quite honest, I I kind of half expected him to get substituted. Yeah. So he He looked like he was, wasn't he? Yeah. It looked like he was, he was struggling a little bit. Like I said, we had, he had some good touches, some really nice interchanges and play, and then some, some not so good. So all in all, it was decent. Um, As for what he's capable of, I ain't saying nothing because there's been too many (laughs) players that I'd put. I've hoped that would end up being our Vieira, and I just don't want to jinx the guy. I thought he had a really good game yesterday. He looked quite involved with stuff that was going on. And, but we did say last week, fitness is always going to be an, an issue because if it potches training methods and are, are, yeah, they're legendary, aren't they? Everybody will tell you that they're really bloody hard work. And he's not had enough time with the squad to work up to that level of fitness. But I thought he did well yesterday. Home crowd, goal on your debut. You can't say better than that, can you, really? No, I, yeah. I, I mean, it always helps to, to, to get you know get a goal. I mean, less so from, from a midfield player. If, 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 if it was a striker, there'd be, there'd be pressure. But but it's nice still for him to, to get a goal with a decent effort. And it's going to take... If I contrast it to Victor Wanyama in his first season, the difference was Wanyama, for example, was playing... In the Premier League already for, for Southampton, he, he'd been established, and um, and he's also played under Pochettino at, at, at Southampton. So, but, but, Don Bele has got to get to grips with the training methods of Pochettino, and that's going to take some time. But he's also got to get to grips with playing, going from playing in League One or how it's pronounced in in in, in France, which is not the same standard as the Premier League to, to, to play in the Premier League, which which is a higher standard and, and it's it, it played at a much faster pace. So um, it's a good start. And, and I think, you know, I don't think there's any ceiling to, for him. And I think, I think he can, he's got the potential to, to be as good as he wants. And he's got the right coach to, to help nurture yeah. him and, and, and develop him. So, um, yeah, I think that's all good. Um, question from John Steggles. Uh, his Twitter handle is at JW Steggles. Did Villa play in the image of John Terry? They went down <laughs> whenever they received the slightest of touches, giving niggly fouls and moaned to the ref um, if they were given as a foul. Horrible to watch. Um, one disappointment of yesterday was that in the stadium, in the concourse it was a bit different, there were sung song about Terry, but in the stadium there were hardly any songs. No, I don't think there were any, certainly in the, in the South where I was. Sung about John Terry. That's a missed opportunity in my book. He's really is he that important to us? No, still no. Man. But it's just, just you know, it's just a nice opportunity nah. just to just to mock him. Yeah, but it's also nice to ignore him and just say, "Oh, yeah. you're just some, you're just some backroom prick, tracksuit wanker." That's true. Still not as good as Ledley. No. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, John Terry really is not massive on anybody's radar I don't think and if nobody said anything yesterday then it's not just me that thinks that so who who was the Don Bellet scored in his debut yesterday who was the last Tottenham player to score on their debut do you know the answer before I yes I do oh, oh, Danny okay. Rose no that's going to say it's going to be more recent than that um, probably uh, uh, um uh, mm. I know that Victor Wanyama scored on his home debut against Palace, a header. But that's not his debut, I guess. No. Oh, okay. Um, mm, mm. Roberto Soldado? Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer, yeah. Oh, yeah. West Ham away. Yeah, beautiful goal. Who was on the bench, by the way, yesterday? Him and him and him and Wenny Armand, but made the bench, which was which, which was good to see because uh, I don't think either of them kicked a ball during pre-season. Um, mm-hmm. Question from Rob Craxford: What was 
what was the VAR for in the second half? Kicking the nuts or WWE? Um, I miss this, so if anybody can enlighten me. I think they were just looking to see if there was a stamp. Um, Walker Peters wasn't happy, and he, you know the, he was just kicking at the ball, and the ball was by Walker Peters' balls, and he weren't too happy about it. I think they were just checking to see if there, there was a stamp in there, but there weren't. So I don't get it. If they're looking for... Because that went from a theoretical red to nothing in, like, seconds few. Sorry. So, either there is a serious infringement and a, something happens to the player, or, or it just vanished. There was nothing at all. Why did they need to VAR it, then? Could the ref not see? It just seemed, like, really extreme that one minute they were talking about VAR for a possible red, and then it just, there was nothing at all. Because there was nothing there. They couldn't see anything going so on. They couldn't case, see. Why hype up for a possible red? No harm to Walker Peters Maltesers. Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, Jav, how did, because there were a couple of VAR. Uh, it didn't really. It wasn't an issue. Generally, it did. Yeah, but how was it in the stadium? Um, so it, it just came up on 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 the screen, and it just said VAR. So we knew it was happening, okay. and then it just came up with like no penalty or whatever it might be. Um, and that was it. It was fast. It was, but you know, obviously we're, we're not privy to. We don't get the benefit of you know the action replays and 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 all of that. Um, that you would do watching at home, um, and obviously you, if you're watching at home, you, I suppose you get a sense of how long. How pro- they carry they carry on playing, don't they? Uh, I think there was a pause. I could be wrong on one of the decisions. Um, but it was it, like it was better than it was better than I don't know eighteen months ago when I saw it. Um, yeah. For the first time in a FA Cup tie with with David Fornell against either Rochdale or Newport, one of those shit teams. Rochdale, yeah. that was the night it snowed at Wembley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, just, I didn't have a didn't have a clue, and it just ruined the game. It was just long pauses. I mean, even last season, the the the, the goal that we scored against um, Chelsea in the semi final of the um, League Cup, I seem to recall there was there was a bit, quite a bit of a pause afterwards, um, mm-hmm. and he just completely clueless as to what's going on. So. I'm not a fan, but you know, with any system, it's gonna it, it, it it's gonna go for a few teething problems initially, and and I'm sure it will improve and and, and get better. Um, question from Darren, another one from Darren Pemmenter. KWP had a good, solid game. Looked confident and composed. Can this be his breakout season? Can he become a? Can he become our first choice right back? Definitely. He's capable of it. I thought he had, I, I thought he had a decent game yesterday. He, got, he saw a lot of the ball. He got a lot of the ball. There was a lot of time when we were just kind of passing it around on the edge of the area and nobody seemed to know what they were doing, that the ball kept on finding its way back to him. And I just He looked competent and comfortable, and I thought it was a good start for him. But, mm. you know, he started first game of the season before. The real test will be just to what happens in the next three or four matches, right? Yeah, no, I, he had a good game. There was nothing to pinpoint to say that he had a gash game. So I'm guessing if you... If he, had you a better game it, than, he had a better game than Rose, in my opinion. I thought Rose in the first half, especially defensively, was awful. His positioning was oh, terrible. Well, I don't know if Danny Rose was convinced of the fact that Villa would be a shoe in and therefore he wouldn't have to run back and defend. Mm. Maybe, but I did think KWP did well. Mm. I think that unlike previous seasons, where he you know he starts a maybe a opening game or something like that by virtue of the fact that there's nobody else around or available, um, and then he's got Trippier ahead of him. He's got Sergio ahead of him. Now he doesn't have Trippier ahead of him. He's just got Sergio. He's, all he's got is Sergio. Really? Who? who uh, question <laughs> question marks around, around him. Um, who are the other options at right back? He, I mean, Eric Dyer can play there, but he hasn't played there in a while. He's not, you know, he, he's only made the bench yesterday after missing pre or pre-season. 
Um, Sissoko has been talked about as a right back. He's not really a right back. Eric the Ford. only pl- the only pl- the only place Sissoko has been spoken about as a right back was on the last pod, and it did make me laugh because I just <laughs> didn't see it, just didn't see it happening. Well, how he... could we how could we waste his attacking threat by putting him at right back? So I think he did against Barcelona away in the Champions League last season, as I recall. Carl, Carl, we- Carl Walker Peters came off, and Fasoko slipped in into that role, and it, and he has he he can you know he's got the strength to bring the ball forward from that position, right. but maybe he doesn't have the end product. Uh, well, sorry, not or by saying he doesn't have the end, the, 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 the end end product, and 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 does he have the positional sense to defend? Um, like a full-back should or in, in a back four, uh, probably not. Foyth is the other option that's been talked about. Again, you're talking about a centre-back playing playing in a position that, I was going to say, he's not accustomed to, but he has. He did play there in, in, for, for, for Argentina in, in the Copper. Well, he's injured as well. So Foyth, uh, not Foyth, sorry. Walker and Peters, suspended. And suspended. So Walker Peters has got a bigger opportunity than previous seasons to get a decent run of games. Absolutely. Games. And if he and if he takes it with both hands, it's then going to be suddenly it might be difficult to, you know, dislodge him. And if he's, and and with that if he's, if he does well and his confidence in, in, improves, then he can um push on from there. He's um he's a small lad, so that's the only thing that slightly concerns me. I just think he's a really steady player. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's not. There's nothing fancy. There's nothing flash. I think he's unlikely to get himself sent off. Though he did have a rock with somebody yesterday. He got a little bit riled. Um, I don't. I can't remember if that was the VAR thing or not. But he seems yeah. quite, you know, grounded. Not going to punch somebody just because they look at him the wrong way. And he is only tiny. So is that the fact now that we have two? Because Danny Rose isn't a giant either, no, is he? No. And, and always Trippier. True. Okay. Uh, my, biggest, my biggest concern is is defending. I think everybody looks at fullbacks as, as for their attacking threat before they look at their de- defending ability. And people did that with Trippier here and there as well. I think. And most important for me is that they're damn good at defending. That's 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 a priority, right? I mean that's why that's why I prefer Davis over Rose because I just think he's a much more solid defender, much more solid when it comes to positioning, and he's actually better in the final third. I think when it comes to producing crosses, he just needs a run in the team. But Carl Walker Pierce, when have we ever really seen him like under threat, you know, and having to defend? So hopefully we'll get to see that and see what he's made of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, another question from Nikki Merritt. She said, I had some Jansburg Spurs members at the game and they were t- uh, telling me that Lamella um, was getting loads of abuse. Um, I- I'd have to watch the game back to see, but I didn't think he had- he was having a particularly poor game. Did you see something that perhaps um, we who were watching on TV didn't see or was it just a case of fans moaning because they had to blame, that's blame somebody? So... Um, I don't think he not, had a bad game. Yeah, he, he didn't have a bad game, but not outstanding. But he wasn't. I, I've seen him play lots worse. Yeah, no, I agree. But there does seem to be amongst some of our fans, not just yesterday, but since the beginning of time, it almost seems, seems to be a Lamella, an anti Lamella uh, agenda. They just don't rate Definitely. him. Definitely. And mm-hmm. and that's fine if you know if we all have our favourites, we all have players that we you know, but but it's almost become it's got to the point where for some fans they just are so fixated in their um, opinion that they can't see beyond it, or they're not willing to. So um, if I contrast Lamella to Danny Rose, different different pl- different players, different positions, obviously, um, a lot of people. I'm not Danny Rose's biggest fan. I was slightly t- talked about on the, on the, on on the last pod. Um, a lot of people who who like Danny Rose will tell me he's Mr. Tottenham. He play he wears he wears his heart on his sleeve. But he, but he's you know he he's he'll he'll fight for every ball etc. Yet Eric Lamella does exactly the same thing. Eric Lamella chases every ball. He works hard. He closes opponents down. He he 
gets under the skin of 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 the opposition. If it's a if it's a case of wearing your heart on your sleeve, and I and I don't think, by the way, to be a good footballer, it's just a question of that. You need you, you need to back it up with with skill and 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 ability. Um, but if it's just a question of that, I, I'd say that Lamella does exactly that. Yet nobody seems to give him credit for for that, which is which is a great shame. And and there, there does seem to be some number of fans that just just write him off. And whether it's the the, the countless injuries he, he's had o- over the years, I I don't know. All I, all I'd say is that um, this might just be one season, and 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 maybe this illustrates the the, the point that there's. Um, critics make the fact that he's injured all the time. That 2015-16 season when we were chasing Leicester, if you go back and look at the lineups over the course of the season, he was a regular in in the one to eleven, and he played a big part in in a lot of the games over that over the course of that season. The free ball to, to Ericsson to get the winner at the um, at the Etihad, um, Villa away, we 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 won that I think three nil. Um, he played a big part there. There were, there were loads of other games where, particularly when we were hitting teams on 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 the counter attack, United at home, when when we had that spell, I think it was a ten fifteen minute spell where we just tore them mm-hmm. apart. He was superb, um, and yeah, he's been blighted by injuries before and since. Um, he's a decent player, I think. Absolutely, I really really hope that he can manage to go through this whole season injury free. If he does. That'll be that'll be big for us because at the end of the day, before you know, before La Chelsea, if Ericsson's not on form, who's our next person? Who's the next guy that has that ability to unlock defences or play that pass? Mm. Lamella's extremely. He's probably the best team player we have. He's always looking to put somebody else in. He's very rarely greedy. And uh, by the way, our second goal yesterday. Was all him. He got yeah. hold of Grealish. He pulled Grealish's pants down. And Grealish had a decent game. Got a little bit too overconfident, and Lamella came, picked his pocket, and bam, game over for Villa. So yeah, I, I truly believe that that is just people that that will never accept Lamella. But he's still capable of turning that around. And I really, like I said, I really hope he, we get to see the best of him because he's there's all for me. There's always been that feeling of there's more. There's more to come from him if it wasn't for injuries and I did think there was none of his trademark thuggery almost he didn't there were no reckless tackles yesterday he seems to have grown up a little bit so we'll see how far that does or doesn't take him he was he was a spark for us yesterday I thought when we were sluggish and slow in the first half every time the ball came to him he he, you know we seemed to pick up speed he seemed to be wanting to attack and thrust so yeah I don't see it I mean look the story of Eric, Eric Lamella is the first two, two seasons he was he was at the club um, he joined at a time certainly the first season where we were in transition we had AVB then we had Sherwood or okay second season um, Pochettino was there but particularly that first season he, he had an injury he was also playing in a different country I think apart from the apart from the manager I think he was the only Argentinian uh, um, in the club at, at, at the time, mm-hmm. the only other Spanish-speaking player we had was Roberto Soldado. Um, you know, he wasn't in a happy place, almost certainly, um, outside of football, and and he was and he had an injury, so and playing in a different country. And um, he was quite young, wasn't he? When yeah. He came to us. Yeah. He then had that really good, I think, 2015-16 season, which he, he didn't start off particularly well. I remember that season, to even even then. I remember the, the, the game against Stoke where um, oh. you and I were uh, sat, <laughs> stood next to each other, Bex, and, and, he, and he, came, he came off the bench and he just he just failed to... Shit. Yeah, he was pretty shit. And we were just <laughs> like, you know, th- this is just poor. But he actually then went on to have, over that course of that season, he had a good season. Yeah. He scored a hat- hat-trick against... Um, Monaco, I think, in the Europa. And then I, I had real high hopes for him the following season, the 2016-17. He started off okay, and then he got got, got injured. And then he was he was out yep. for, for a long time. And that that affected him. That's, you know, yeah, okay, he had other things going on. His, his dog died and his brother was involved in, in, in an accident, a um, car accident at, at the same time. Um, but fundamentally, he, was, he wasn't able to do what he loves, which is to play football. Um, and that affected him. But you look at him now, his English has improved, he's happy, he's settled, he's now got all his mates, he's got Foyt, Gazaniga, um, Lo Celso's come in. He's, you know, he's, he's itching to play. And uh, like you said, Mark, if he can, st- if he can stay clear from uh, injuries, um, I think hopefully 
he he can start to make a an impact. So even last season, we forget early on he did quite well. Yeah. He, sc- he scored against um, Brighton. Um, well worked team goal. Um, Brighton away from home. There was a European game. That, that, that he, he he started off okay last season, and then he got injured and and drifted out out out, out the team. And um, like he's a he's a vital part of that squad. Um, he might not be. If you've if got everybody fit, he might not be the first name on the on 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 the team sheet, but um, he's a very good player to have to you know bring on off 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 the bench and 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 even to in scenarios like yesterday when you've got someone like Delhi injured to start him. Um, let's talk about somebody who was absent from the proceedings yesterday. So um, I heard, and it was you, Mark, you messaged me just before the game yesterday saying there was a rumour flying around that Jan hadn't been included in the squad. And, and lo and behold, we were sort of actually waiting an hour, an hour and a half before kickoff for the teams to be announced. And lo and behold, Jan isn't in the starting eleven, and he's not on the bench either. Either um, I had heard initially that it was just due to a knock and he was being rested. And then there was um, another tweet um by a journalist at sky whose name escapes me who said that he'd been left out due to a contract or dispute and when they asked pochettino both before the game and after the game he evaded yeah because if it had been an injury he would have said yeah he's injured but he didn't he he did the whole i've got 11 players to pick you know, choose sort of thing, and there are other players in the squad, and I've got Dyer on the bench, who's a defender who can play that position, etc., etc. Jan's got to fight for his place in the team, which is all very well and good if it was another player. But this is Jan the Jan. This is, you know, this is a mainstay of the team. This is somebody like Harry Kane, who, who, if fit, would be the first name on 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 the team sheet. So it did it did raise eyebrows. Um, Darren Pamenter asks. What do you think of the Jan, of the situation with Jan? Um, decides for tactical reasons, goes uh, go with Toby and Sanchez. That's fine. Um, with three quality centre backs, but it seems odd to me that he wasn't even on the bench. Surely a better bench option than an unfit Uria that hasn't played in pre-season. And I'll, I'll, I'll also, for that matter, say a, a unfit Dyer who hasn't played pre-season. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the deal is. I mean, what was it, a week ago? Mm. Vertonghen came out and said, I'm happy, this is the place to be. I've got a year left, I don't know what's going on. And I'm wondering whether <clears throat> we've we've offered him another year and he wants another two years or something like that. It's just, you know, a little dispute. But Pochettino definitely looked like over the course of that conversation, he started to get a little bit sweatier when the subject came to uh, the Tongan. It looked, he looked a little bit uncomfortable. But the kind of person Jan is, I wouldn't expect, um, you know, if Toby can and Ericsson can be in these, these situations and still be professional mm-hmm. and play, I'd expect Jan to be exactly the same, and I'd also expect the club to to do their best to work it out. For yeah. me, it's like for me, it's like give him two years, give him two years, and then if you really don't want him that second year, then sell him to Ajax. And at least you're going to get money for him too because he's got a year left. Yeah, I mean the, the truth of the matter is we don't know. The the, the journalist from, yeah. from from Sky who who said it was contract it just be he doesn't know. It could be it could be just something like, I don't know, um dare I say it, you know, uh, the, 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 something akin to what happened with Hugo you know last season, some sort of in, indiscretion off, off off the field, something out something out, something internal and it was just and you know, something yeah. that the club does, that doesn't want to mention. There's also another possibility that um we're making too much out of it now. I know on the face of it, it doesn't look good, and I know, and it, it, that's and that's fine. And as, as fans, we, we look at it and we think, you know, that's 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 all a bit odd. But um, if I draw both of you to a game last season, very early on last season, um, our first Champions League game um, away at Inter, neither Toby Alderweireld or Kieran Trippier travelled to that game. To, to me, at the time, that was a really odd decision. Pochettino was asked about it. He was just as just as of, of, as evasive, evasive as he was yesterday. And you know, to this, 
day I still don't know the, the exact reason I'm still not fully convinced by what Pochettino said at the time but that's forgotten about largely and those players featured in other games featured in a lot of other games over the course of that season and I wonder if this is just a storm in a teacup and Jan will be back against um, you know we've got some big no disrespect to Villa but we have got some big games big two games um, coming up in, in City away and then at the end of the month um, Woolwich away so I wouldn't be surprised if, if he features in, in both of those games alongside Toby Oh, he was there yesterday. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I and mean, then does it this give credence again to Poch and his only manage the players that I can? So if there is something else that's going on, maybe Poch was just told that he can't play. It's a strange time for it all to happen because if it, ha- if it happened at the start of the summer. Um, and if there was any truth in the suggestion that he's, there's a contractual dispute, we could have moved him on. We can still move him on now in this window, European window, but at least we could have brought centre-back in. Um, it's just come out a little bit out of left field. It's it's, it's a little bit odd. I, as I said, I'm just hoping it's it's more akin to the situation we had with Toby and Tripp's last last uh, September when they when they didn't travel and and you know. Than, than they played, and and on Mark on your point, I, I I think you're spot on there. That Jan, I think if he if he is selected for another game, I'm sure he that he's you know the professional that he is, he'll just get on with it. It strikes me that none of these players, whether that's Toby, and he's been season before last year, we both recall that when he came back from his injury, he can get into the team. Now I, some of that was due to the form of Sanchez, but. Um, there was, you know, it was suggested that he was left out because of the con- contractual dispute. Ericsson at the moment, both yesterday and pre-season, he's, he's been on the bench pretty much. Um, but they've all, when they're all called upon, they all play. They all give it 100%. Oh yeah, I frequently don't want to go to work. But, you know, needs must. Mm. They're not the sort of players that down tools. And we've, we've seen a few of those over the years. Um, when it comes to you know wanting a move or trying to push a move, um, so yeah, we're just going to have to w- watch and see how things develop there. Well, we're never going to find out the truth, are we? So mm. no, not until somebody writes a book a few years down the line. Yeah, and by then nobody will care. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, Man City away um, next game on Saturday. Um, so I'm I'm going up on on Saturday with David with David Fornell and um, I do like going up to Manchester. Manchester is one of my, one of my favourite favourite cities uh, after after London. Um, great city. Um, it is the home of some of the best music that this country has produced. Some of the some of the best bands. Um, lovely city, and also games against Man City. Spurs historically. City Spurs games in the past have been some really really good 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 games for, for, for you know both teams the, whether that's the Ricky Villa goal um, in the eighty one Cup final um, the Man City comeback when we were three 0 up in a, in a cup tie in, I think two thousand and four more recently the the VAR game um, last season um, you know that there, there was our win at, at at their place a few years ago. Um, I mentioned it earlier, Lamella's free ball to, to Ericsson to get to get the winner. There's been some fantastic games, and I mean both teams like to play football. Um, it's very early on in the season to be to be playing City. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe in some ways it's good so you can get that that game out out, out of the way. Um, how do you see that? How, how do you both both of you see that game? Can we can we go there and get a result of some sort? Is it a good time to be playing City? Is, is there ever a good time to be playing City? I would much rather be. I'd much rather be playing them. You know, five or six games in when we've found some Warmed momentum. Up a bit. But you know, it is what it is. It, it could go either way, right? It could be good for us. It could be good for them. We'll have to see. But I just, I think we're more than capable of, of coming away with at least a point. We're we're one of the few teams that aren't shit scared of City, and after the Champions League last year, they're they're probably a little bit nervous of us too. I mean, that game towards the end of the season, that should have been a draw. That really should have. So, 
Yeah, They're probably I don't more see, worried no. about VAR being yeah, used during I, the game. Yeah. We should be all right. It, we both had good results at the weekend. They beat West Ham, which is always amusing. Um, it, it's early. It's, it's so early in the season that you can't gauge form. Mm. You can't even have a best guess. So toss a coin and see what comes up. Is um, the sun still suspended for this game? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a blow because I think when we played them in the Champions League, the pace of him and Mora on, on the on the break really caused some problems. Um, but you know we've got a fit and firing Harry Kane who scores in August. It turns out that that, mm-hmm. that is a thing. Two seasons um, on the trot now. <laughs> that he scored, scored in August. Um, obviously. Well, the other thing was he scored his first goals in, in or goal in the, new, the stadium, new stadium. stadium. Um, so we've, we've got him. We, we've got Lucas. Um, I would hope actually that Ericsson starts this, starts this game because I think we we need if we've got any chance of beating City, that we need to have all our best players subject subject to them being fit starting that game. Um, I think we'll get a draw. I'll take okay. it. Yeah. Just you know, uh, this early on in the season, I'd, I'd quite happily, I'd, I'd quite happily take a point at, the, at this stage. Right. Um, we've got a few questions from listeners, uh, which I'll come on to in a minute. Before I do that, um, just to cu- go back um, to transfers, and I know Bex, we discussed this on, on the first podcast, um, but I, I mentioned it earlier in the pod, I, I met up with one of our listeners, um, Ed Brad. Um, and another Spurs fan, a guy called um, James Varner, for lunch on Friday. And we were discussing, amongst other things, Spurs, and it came up. And we were talking about transfers and the players that we brought in. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't, th- I, you know, I think any sane Spurs fan will tell you this was a good window and the ac- acquisitions we made, obviously Clark learning him back, but Session. Ses- on Dombele or Dombele and Lichelso are, are fantastic ac- ac- acquisitions, and I think it, it it has been a good 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 window, for, you know, without that. You can you can point to the fact that there's still you know question marks over Ericsson, Toby, Rose, and Jan, possibly, apparently. possibly possibly Yan. Um, we'll we'll see what happens when, when when the European window closes. You can also be critical and say we haven't really addressed the the, the right back si- situation. Um, Maybe maybe Pochettino has, has got confidence in Walker Peters and 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 Uria for this season. Um, the point I was going to make was, and this isn't, I, I'm not being critical, and it's not a leavey out, and this was a bad window type thing. But the point that me and Ed discussed, and we were both actually of the same opinion, which was the players that we've brought in. They're all really good players. Don't get me wrong, but they're all very young players, and all of whom will no doubt, just like when we got Ericsson and San and Delhi, they're all players who will have got potential, and no doubt will will improve under Pochettino, and and will get better. But we didn't go out and sign any established players. I don't mean somebody over the hill, somebody in their thirties. Um, I don't mean a you know we we did that with. Um, dear old Lorente, and I, I don't think there's any value in doing that necessarily. But we didn't go and sign somebody maybe in the in their mid to late twenties, somebody who's a proven serial winner, um, or, and or someone d- with Premier League experience. With someone with Premier right. League, yeah. yeah. So, didn't so, we try that with Dybala? We tried that with Dybala. There is a question on on. on <laughs> in, a, in a minute, which, which we'll get to, get to, and that, that's that's a, that's a fair point. And I don't know if the the, the Dybala thing was ever likely to happen, or whether it was just a big smoke screen or, or, no. or whatnot. But we didn't. So uh, two points here: we didn't get that sort of experienced type player or Premier League player or somebody who's a proven winner. And from that, dare I say it? And I'm not suggesting this is a case, but it's just something that we were talking about the other day with Ed, which is, is there a school of thought that perhaps Pochettino doesn't like big egos? He p- more prefers to sign young talent that he can nurture as opposed to anybody who's... That he has to man-manage yeah. in that style of... Because he's not Mourinho. Hmm. Is that a fair comment? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 
I'm playing devil's advocate somewhat, but I, I just want, we've always had, thoughts. or uh, recently, and certainly since Poch came in, he's only ever signed younger players. How old is Sissoko? Mm, when we signed him, I think it was 20, 26, 27. But normally, yeah, Poch goes for younger players that he can beat yeah. into submission. Yeah. And um, they are young enough to withstand the rigours of his training methods. Yeah. And he expects people to put in a lot of effort all through the game. There's none of this, the last five minutes, I'm tired. It is constant up until the final whistle. You will run around and you will run some more mm. and you will run until your feet can't, your feet hurt and you can't breathe, but you will keep running. And I think he prefers that with a the younger player. They're more likely to be more accepting. They don't have that same um, knowledge from other clubs. Well, we didn't do this at yeah. wherever yeah. they've come from. So it's all within Poch's hands. Well, I think I think if you're going to try and get those people with the strong egos in, you've got to have a bunch of strong egos already there in the squad to make sure that they don't come in and unsettle things or, you know, take over as such. I think we're kind of, we're in a transition, really, because, you know, Toby's probably going to go, Jan's not got long left, so we're kind of changing over and we're expecting, we're probably expecting other players to step up and become the leaders within the squad. So, I, I mean, I, I agree that he, I'm sure he, he prefers younger players as well, but I think it's a case of who's available. And then, I mean, look at the cost of some of these players. Just buying somebody's English is ridiculous for starters. But there's definitely a lot of players out there with some of the mid-table clubs that I'm surprised aren't being bought. You know, people like James Ward-Prowse and, you know, good little players that even, not, even if we didn't buy them, like clubs below them, could probably, or just below us trying to break in, could be buying them. But who knows? I mean, who knows? So we, like I said, we've got the Dybala situation. Who knows who we're, who we're trying for? And it's the wages as well. The wages yeah. is, uh, is just a killer. People will not move unless they're getting what they want. They're, they're quite happy to sit on their ass. They need the money is so important for a lot of players. When um, in one of the sort of better, better signings in the Premier League in, in recent years has been Kante. Um, when Leicester got him, um, he wasn't somebody particularly you know widely known, maybe might maybe well known amongst um, more seasoned followers of, of European football, but generally wasn't you know, as well known as now. Um, Leicester made it; that, they made the sort of acquisition that we would make somebody. Perhaps mm-hmm. unheard of and, yeah. and made made an Im, Im, impact. So it, it doesn't. It, that just goes to show that you you don't necessarily need to buy um, a big name or a, you know a, a winner. Although it helps when Leicester. So when 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 Chelsea bought him a season later, obviously they he was by that point a winner with with with, with Leicester. Um, he played in the Premier League experience and he was a name by this this point. But unfortunately, probably at that point we couldn't. You know, match his wages. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's yeah. part, that's that's. Part. Or his agents' demands, I suspect. Yeah, yeah that's, that's part of the well, problem. Well, the, the thing is too is, is is you know we we can't win. Everybody's so proud. On on the one hand, we get all this pride from, you know, our wage bill and the amount of money we spend on players and how we 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 build players up into being very good players. And then the next minute, people just they just want this signing. Like, just make this. This this big signing, like that's the only way we can be a big club if we make this big signing, and it's just so annoying. You you can't win. Marquee marquee signing. Let's go yeah, and make exactly. a marquee signing. Right. Which which brings me on to. That will tell the big boys. <laughs> yeah, they'll all be quaking in their boots, won't they? Mm-hmm. Which brings me on to Bex alluded to earlier. Which brings me on to a question from Leaf. Are there? I. Roy, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. Um, oh, I believe it's from Norway. Um, he, he asked a question um, a few days ago, and I we didn't get round to addressing it in the last podcast. So apologies, but we're, we're going to address it now. And he says, "Hello, I have a feeling that Dybala was happy and set for Spurs, but then slips out of out of our hands in the last minute. What do you think about the chances of signing him later on, like in the next window?" 
So apparently Dybala was all set. Um, Spurs have been working on it for quite a while in the background. They were really confident that they were going to get in. It went right to the morning of transfer deadline day, um, irrespective of his salary demands. And then Juve said, no, we're not selling. So not anything necessarily that Spurs did. Um, although the Levy haters are still going to blame Levy for not splashing the cash. Not anything wrong with the club. Not Dybala saying that he didn't want to come. It was Juve. So I don't know what their game was. I don't know if they actually were touting him out earlier in the window because mm-hmm. there were rumours of him going to, or the United were interested earlier and the reason they pulled out was because of his wage demands. So I don't know if that was Juve's interpretation of his wage demands or his actual wage demands. Well, I heard it just seems a bit so weird. Many, there were so many contrasting stories on this. There was, there was, you know, he would go, he he would only go to United if he didn't have to, you know, with United, the deal was that if you don't qualify for the Champions League, we'll take 25% of your wages because you didn't qualify for the Champions League and he didn't want to play in the Europa League. Then there's the whole image rights situation and yeah. how that was just so complicated. We didn't give ourselves enough time to fix it or whether we could fix it. Then there was, oh, he doesn't want to play in the Premier League. He only wants, to, there's only two clubs he wants to play for and that's Inter Milan or PSG. I mean, who knows? We got it was ridiculous. The last two weeks of the transfer window, we had that Bruno Fernandez situation going on, us United involved. So it's just hard to tell what happened. But I think if we did get Dybala, I still don't believe we'd get him till next summer because more than likely in January he would he wouldn't qualify for the Champions League. We couldn't put him in our Champions League squad anyway. Well, it's interesting you should mention that. There's mm. talk that Sari has said that he will be left out of Juventus's Champions League squad. So they're um, quite willing to sell him to somewhere else in Europe, then. I was going to say. So that unfortunately, that yeah, he might he might well be leaving Juventus, but within this within this European window, to say PSG, that's the yeah, he, he, that... he'll replace Neymar then. But that really confused. Well, assuming that PSG can get rid of Neymar, that really. It, it, I thought it was an odd thing to go for because I've heard of Dybala and as we all know, we normally have to Google our signings because we don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. So it just seemed a little bit like, why would we go for a named player who was at another big club? That's so unlike and everything we've just said about Poch. Why would, I don't know there's an Argentinian link, but it just seemed a bit I don't know, out of character for us? I just, just think we're looking for that extra. You know, we're looking for, you know, towards the end of last season, there just wasn't enough options for us attacking-wise. And I think that's what, that's what we're doing. I was unsu- I'm was i still unsure whether Dybala would fit in our team that well. But I, I, yeah, Posh, know, I Posh knows best. He does indeed, because he's magic, you know. Um, I... Because of the player he is, because he's like he's massive in Argentina, would he have the superstar qualities that we've already said and we've consistently said over the last couple of years that Poch doesn't want? How would yeah. he work coming from a club like Juve? And they're not a small small club; they're huge. How would he fit coming in, then into Spurs? Would he come in with, you know, I'm biggie, big, really big bollocks. Well, look at me. This is what I do. This is how much I cost. He might not do. He might not be that kind of person. But it just seemed a really weird thing for us to go for. Well, I, I'd imagine it's quite a shock that, for him that um, finding out that they were willing to sell him. You know? I, I wouldn't surprise me if he had a bit of an ego. It was kind of, kind of a shock for him that Juve were willing to let him go. Mm. I I wonder whether it, it not the fact that none of this didn't happen and that we weren't talking. You know, I'm sure we were for the last three weeks, but whether it was just we were just doing it to force Betis to sell mm-hmm. the Celso to accelerate yeah. that transfer. Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm uh, when I saw the question, I was going to say, yeah, I, I think we'll, I think we'll go back for him in 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 in, in the January win- no. window. But I can't see that now. I think, given the European window is still open, 
I think he'll I think he'll end up somewhere. If he doesn't and he ends up at Juve and he throws it out, then I then I think the, 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 that window that will 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 uh, opportunity will present itself again in in December, January, January. Um, and I think we we have every chance. And particularly if we're doing really well, and he's not cup tied and he hasn't been registered, and then I think that would be a, a good time to. Um, yeah, but if he, yeah, but if he, if he ain't if he ain't playing, you know, if he's really been frozen out and not mm-hmm. really getting much of a look in, he might not be worth getting in January either. That's true, but then also, if you get him in January, um, you can slowly ease him into the team. He can get up to speed with. Um, yeah. the training methods and then he'll be one for next season like like when we sign Mora in, 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 in January mm-hmm. it doesn't make an impact straight away ok uh, two, three, two, four questions left um, Richard Healy do you all think that our squad has enough depth to challenge in every competition um, what do we need to do to convince Toby, Ericsson, et al Jan that there is no better place than White Hart Lane to be a footballer I don't think there's anything more that the fans can do. Mm-hmm. Because they know where they are loved and that clearly the fans do. So I don't think there's anything more we can do. It's very much out of our hands. I think we we com- we competed pretty damn well in all competitions last season with uh, uh an injury ravaged squad, so there's absolutely no reason why we can't compete exactly the same this season, as far as I'm concerned. And as for Ericsson, Toby, and anyone else, shit, they see more than we see. If they're not convinced, I mean, we're convinced of what a great place our club is right now and, and all the positive things going on. Uh, if you want, if you want to go, if you think it's better somewhere else, then there's the door. That's just the way it is, you know. I mean, when there was rumours of Ericsson going to United, I was like, uh, no, or to, or even Toby going to Roma. I mean, it's like that just says you want money at the end of the day, and if that's the case, see ya. Mm. True, because they're all short of a bob or two, aren't they? Every single one mm-hmm. of the poor little darlings living on the breadline. Well, I just damn well wouldn't go to Roma if I was at Tottenham, you know, and I damn well wouldn't go to United if I was at Tottenham. I just don't wouldn't. think Spurs would sell to United. Not for a lot, not without not. it being a hell of a lot of money. Exactly. And I don't want any of our players going to another Premier League team. When they were talking about Ericsson going to United, I was like, no, but you're not having him. Get your hands off. I think there were... In the Premier League, I think there are a few better places to to be at the moment than than, than playing at Spurs. You know, if you, if you look at the top six, um, Arsenal haven't been in, in 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 the Champions League for what three seasons in a row. They're in a, they're in turmoil. They're in a transitional phase. Chelsea as well. Um, United are not the. Four. I know they're still a big name. They are Manchester United, but they are not the fourth they once were. So really, it's ourselves, City, and Liverpool now. Yep. City can offer the wages, that's fine and there is a fair chance if you go to Man City they will win a trophy each season under Pep there's a fair, there's a good chance so, You know, they, he's a serial winner um, there's also a good chance depending on you and your standing as a footballer that however good you are and however much City value you and will, are willing to pay money for you you're going to struggle to get a game and that's not that's not necessarily true of every player, but some will. Some will their chances will be limited. Um, the other option is Liverpool. So, and even then, you've got to look at it. So, for example, um, let's just say if it's Toby Alderweireld, um, do Liverpool are they looking for another or you know central defender? Um, they're probably happy with 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 what what, what they've got. You know, so sometimes it's about these these clubs and and whether. Those positions are available, or whether they necessarily need to, to, to strengthen them. So, certainly there are other options outside of the Premier League. Um, I, I get, I get why an Ericsson at whatever it is, twenty-seven years of football, 
one last big contract why he would like to go to a Madrid or Barcelona I wouldn't begrudge him that because that might be his it, in fact it will be his one and only opportunity if it presents itself and, it, and if that came along I'd be like okay fair enough um, but I, there aren't many better places um, than, than at the moment playing in, in the new White Hart Lane playing under you know under Pochettino playing in, in this exciting team and it's about actually fucking time some of these players started delivering and, and we started winning some trophies and we stopped talking about the, you know, the potential of, the, of this team and they, they start to, to realise the potential and, and start to win trophies because frankly, if they can't do it at Spurs, um, they've got no divine right to go anywhere else and think they can win trophies, you know, so... Um, Everything, I think everything is there for them. That you know, that, that they've got yeah. this fantastic stadium, fantastic training ground. Um, the platform is there. The, the wages, yes, they might not be the best basic um, sort of flat salary that, that they might get compared to other clubs. But if any, from what we've heard, the bonuses at Spurs are particularly good. And let's face it, we we do win a lot of games now, so those bonuses. Um, they, they they do reap the, reap the um, rewards of those, so everything's there really for for, for players to to succeed. Um, there shouldn't be any excuses. So I don't I don't think there's anything, awesome. anything more we can do as a club. No, I do I think agree. there's a danger of this being Poch's last season if we don't win anything. Well, that's another yeah, yeah, and I I do wonder whether the reluctance of some of these players to sign contracts is down to. Um, the Toby one is obviously a little bit more. That, that's been a long-standing thing, but Ericsson in particular, I wonder whether whether they believe that this is perhaps, you know, he 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 might not be there yeah. at the club beyond beyond the season. I I do, I do worry. Um, okay, another one from our own John Steggles. Um, what's the panel's opinions on Alice bans and stupid stupid haircuts <laughs> on players, Mark? Well, I got one word to say to you, Javinia. I mean, seriously, if you can't see how fantastic an Alice band and mm-hmm. that kind of hairstyle looks on Javinia, then can't help you. Have you have you ever had an Alice band, Mark? <laughs> uh, not intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I have woken up with one. <laughs> Um, I think this the, the question. <laughs> I think the um, the question uh, is in reference to Jack, Jack Grealish, Grealish looking yeah. like a complete twat. Yeah. With an ice band, you know, I was like, is, find a fucking hairdresser or get a hair band, a proper hair band, because it was it's ridiculous. I wouldn't go and play sport with a hair, with my hair that short and an ice band. Mm. Tight back, get it out of your face so it's proper away from your face. And if you watch the Women's World Cup as well, they'll put those hairbands on, but not one of them has got short hair. Fucking sort it out. You look at shambles. And actually, if anybody, the only person I knew who could get, who ever got away with that was Berbatov. And Jack Grealish is not. Yeah, you had the likes of Woodgate and Beckham trying that shit, and they just looked stupid. And they both look better than Jack Grealish does. He was a bit of a knob. Yesterday, he, Mr. He Grealish. Didn't, he, he didn't mind a tumble, did he? You're making a meal out of it. No, little bit of a drama queen. Did you see what they did to me? They pushed me. Oh, do fuck off. I am so glad we didn't sign him. So glad yeah, we didn't so sign him. Yeah, but um, see, I think he's one of those players. If he's in an opposition team, you despise him. But if he's in your team, mm-hmm. that is God's gift. Listen, for the, never mind he the a Alice. a bit mate. Never mind the Alice band. For the accent alone, I'm glad that we didn't sign him. Oh, God. Bloody I've annoying. Speak. Brummy accent. Oh, worst worst in the world. Yeah, whiny, whiny, whiny. Really? Is it worse than Scouse? Yes. Uh, yes. Much Ooh. worse. Much worse. No, see, whiny as Scouse hell. really more, much more annoying. No, they bleat. They just bleat. All right, dear mate. <clears throat> I, I worked with two... Well, I still work with one of them, but um, two guys from Wolverhampton and one of them just openly just said the accent's annoying and didn't like, didn't oh. two guys used to play for Blackburn oh, yeah different two guys All right. so, oh, very good. Um, 
Um, famously, somebody else wore, wore an Alice band. Our own manager, Maurizio Pochettino. Yeah, it would have looked good. it would have looked stunning on Poch. Yeah. Jack Grealish, nah, not so much. So back in, I think it was nineteen ninety eight, possibly. Was it 98? Uh, was it 2002? 1998, I think. Yeah, 19, 1998. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel um, I can't pronounce his name. He was the Argentinian manager, and he was their, 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 their 1978 World Cup winning skipper. Daniel Presella, I think. Passarella. Passarella, okay. Passarella, Passarella. right. Passarella, right. Another one of many footballers who I struggle to pronounce their name. Daniel <laughs> Passarella, right? So he famously, he said at the 90s, he, he just issued a blanket ban on, um, and I quote, this is what he said, right? He said, players with earrings, homosexuals, and players with, 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 with long hair, they won't be included in, in, in the squad, um, which is quite, quite some statement. Um, and not something that you would be able to say as a manager. No. no. No, clearly, um, I do. I do, however, agree with him on the haircut thing. I, 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 I have an issue with players yeah, with, with, with with long hair. His hair wasn't even freaking long. <laughs> it's not. It's just the way it's styled. Just get a proper hairband. Get an elastic and tie it back. Maybe if somebody's feeling really nice, they can plait it for you. But it shouldn't. That Alice band was just ridiculous. And actually, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I know, Jav, you're a bit of a hair fan, but his hair was had so much product on it that it wouldn't even fucking move anyway. Yeah, Brill Cream, no doubt. I don't know something. what it was, but it was absolutely rock solid. It wasn't going anywhere. So what's the point of wearing a bloody hair band? In the... Anyway, yeah, get an if elastic, you, mate. If or you look at our... Set of clippers. If you look at our club, all the players have decent haircuts. I mean, Toby Alderweireld, obviously. <laughs> um, but, you know... They have good haircuts. I think. I think. I think it should be mandatory for, for 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 all footballers just to have a grade one, no nonsense, just just shaven all all over. Just the that's it. Eric Dyer's all right then. Yeah, yeah. They play better. True, proven. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Final question. So th- these are the um, reoccurring, the two reoccurring questions now that we have on the podcast. So um, obviously Bex and I addressed this on the last pod. So it's over to you, Mark. Um, so the first question is from Sam Diggins. Two Spurs players move into houses either side of you. Who would you like them to be? Um, I think number one would be Aurier. Be an, it'd be an interesting couple of months. Nice bloke, <laughs> nice girlfriend. Um Found a topless bird by my bins hiding from his girlfriend who come home early. Probably having a ama- <laughs> probably have an amazing Halloween party. Rebury and Skip scared the shit out of everybody as yeah. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Um, police out for disturbances a couple of times. You know, upper class community. Found out after after Aurier moved out because he got transferred away for just being an unruly mess outside of the club. That you know the bushes and shrubs that are mysteriously get messed up was uh, Oreo's random slide tackles. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one would probably be Lamella. Just think it'd be a nice bloke. You know, hang out, hang out with him here and there. Go play FIFA oh, with him. You know. Hold on, hold on. Are you living on the same street, 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 street as me? Because I said Lamella as well. Yeah, but there's going to be a difference because Lamella's going to invite me over to play FIFA. Yeah. His mum, his mum might be a bit of a saucy milf and make a pass at me, but I'll turn her down. <laughs> um, That's good of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just <laughs> Gazaniga and La Chelsea come over too. We'll talk about Lamella when he's out of the room a little bit here and there as well, like saying no. Hey, you think he's a little bit saucy here and there, like if you caught him looking at your package or anything like that. But generally a nice bloke, good friends, Tottenham legend. Get me in, get me into, you know, Argentinian friendly at Wembley, all that kind of stuff. Get me tickets. I think it could be a good situation. Okay, and the other reoccurring question is from um, our own John, who says, um, New New White Hart Lane has been taken over by an international terrorist gang, and Daniel Levy and Poch have been taken hostage. Which three players, past or present, do you gang up with, A-team style, to free them and take back the stadium? 
Um, it would be I'd be like the uh, I'd be like the dude in the in the room with the computers and the cameras, like running everything. Britney Spears style earpiece in the ear and all that kind of stuff directing them. And I would probably get um, Nkudu, Carter Vickers, and some other player that we want to get rid of. And I'll make them <laughs> heroes. They'll save they'll save Levy and Pochettino in a real historic fashion and um, become heroes. And so much so that the nation takes them under their wings and... I'll become a hero of Levy and Pochettino because we'll end up getting around 55, 60 million for them in the transfer market. Can you imagine their image rights alone on the back of being heroes? We could make shitloads of money. Yeah, well, we'll make our money, but then we'll transfer them out at the right time. And whereas we thought we would get, we'd be lucky to get 18, 20 million for all of them, you know, I, thanks to me and my master plan and their her- heroics, 55, 60 million for them. The stadium is safe once more. Stadium is safe, and you know I I get that much of influence with Levy and Pochettino <laughs> that I talk about bringing bagels back, and they tell me to fuck off and <laughs> I never mention it again. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> right, the next podcast will be recorded a week today, the day after the Man City game. Um, <laughs> until <laughs> until um. Until, until, until then. Um, all that's left for me to say is thank you, Bex. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> thank you. Um, and until next time, the future's bright. The future's clearly white. Good night. Come on, Tottenham, the base of bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its low denies. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.